Hello everybody, I'm Dan, I'm the editor and owner of Wargames Illustrated magazine and I'm here with James. Hello. James is the project manager at Wargames Illustrated. What we're going to do today is have a look at the meat in the sausage, uh, which is our new feature in which we show Prime members originally uh, what's in the latest issue of Wargames Illustrated magazine uh, and take a an in-depth look through the magazine itself, talking about the different articles, how they came together, uh, and uh, why they came together, I guess. Um, so, yeah, this issue that we're looking at today is WI398, which is the February 2021 issue of the magazine. I'll be your main guide, and James will chip in with some uh, insightful information, no doubt. I'll try. Yes, okay, good. Um we should point out, of course, that um, with this magazine, you do get a free frame. Now, if you're a Prime member, you can apply to get this free frame via your Prime membership. We'll send it out to you in the post. If you buy the magazine, it comes attached to the front of the magazine like so. Just like last month, we had the free ACW frame with the magazine, which proved to be ridiculously popular uh, and continuing to do so. Uh, but this month we've got um, Greek hoplites, and we'll explain a bit more about why that is when we when we get into the magazine. So um, let's start with the cover, because that's the very best place to start. It is a um, good place to start. Yes, it is. Yeah. So Neil Roberts is our um, artist of choice, uh, and you commissioned this one from him, didn't you, James? I did, but we sort of what we usually do is we'll talk together and work out what the theme is, what we want to do, and then we'll we'll give Neil a bit of a brief. I think this one was pretty wide open, though, wasn't it? We didn't specify too much. No, we, I, mean, I mean, he knows that it's going to be holy war. Obviously, the theme is going to be holy war, and we we so I think he sort of ran with the idea of crusaders, or or, or specifically Richard the Lionheart against Saladin, which of course is the um, typical holy war i guess in many ways particularly for war gamers so yeah he 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 ran with that idea and he, he kind of based it on our moments in history model which is also featured on the cover didn't he he did yeah and you uh, provided a bit of a stained glass example and a bit of guidance on sword length and things like that getting all specific but yeah. i think it came out really well it's a very striking image in the end it's nice to have a nice bright colour on there, isn't it? For one, thing. yeah, for sure. Um, um, right, okay. So, so let's let's get into it. Um, of course, the first first couple of pages that we come across are the contents page. So, there's the editorial in there, in which I talk a little bit about. I tend to focus on the themes of the magazine for one thing, and introduce the frame as well. That's going to be free with the magazine. Then we've also got the um, the list of the contents, obviously, brief introductions to what each article is. We won't look at that very closely because we're going to look at each article closely. We are. But if we're sausaging, we could say, you know, that's one of the last things that is decided for the magazine right at the end when we're kind of working out the running order and you'll always get the page count wrong by one and we'll spend about an hour trying to work out why that is. Yeah. Let's <laughs> never say if we're sausaging again. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> right I, I thought we were trying to create a, a catchphrase for this <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah well maybe we'll um yes we, 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 we will look at uh, those in more detail but yeah like you say it's the last thing that comes together isn't it because um because we can we can we then know what we've got in the magazine about one yeah. day before we go to print yeah because yeah. i mean this one was very well it wasn't last minute but because of the christmas break we were actually trying to get this one ready much further in advance weren't we than usual and get as much as we could done so so we could have two weeks off for christmas eating mince pies and drinking sherry yeah yep which already seems like ages ago it does <laughs> yeah um so the first the first real section of the magazine is quick fire so it's uh, as it says on the 10 short quick uh, read posts from wi readers about their hobby projects notes news and observations so generally speaking you sort of compile all these don't you james from what comes in yeah and people can uh, send in any stuff that they've got going on uh, i think it's wi at wargamesillustrated.net so i'll just get stuff every month pictures articles and then yeah bring it all together mm. it's really it nice to work on this it's lots of cool stuff from people who read our magazine so yeah it is isn't it it's great to see what people are up to i mean it's up to it's had a particular tone this year because of lockdown of course so there's a lot yeah. of sort of lockdown related things and more people doing hobby projects than ever before 
Uh, of course, I think we've done another nine since we put these into print, haven't we? So. We, we? We got a lot, yeah. I think over Christmas people did stuff, and then we put out a bit of a call for more, so we've we've kind of been swamped with them, but we always welcome more. It's good to have them. Yeah, it's great to have them, uh, um, but it also means I can't remember what these ones were that we put in this magazine, But, <laughs> but so that'll be great because it won't spoil the surprise. Mm. Um, from there, we move on to another regular feature, which is observation posts. So this is new and forthcoming war game stuff you need to know about. So these are figures that are either um, reviewed by myself, by you, um, or by um, other people. Basically, we send a lot of stuff out for review, don't we? It gets reviewed. We do. Uh, so we've got uh, things from the Plastic Soldier Company. We've got stuff from North Star. Uh, we've got the Baron's War, quite a big one this month, which which I did actually was the flip through of the Baron's Wars rules. Yeah. Um, I say when we say flip through, what we mean there is actually there'll be an online video of this as well, so you'll be able to see an online video of us flipping through the book and talking about it as well. So Baron's War being the the new book from Footsaw um, or War Banner, wasn't it? Footsaw War Banner. I get a bit confused. Yes. Too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's their their rule set for fighting uh, the Barons, first Barons Wars, particularly 1215 to 1217. But I know that's got a lot of attention, particularly online, and it, it is a great looking set of rules as well. Yeah, cause, and the figures as well are really good because it's Footsaw that does the models, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. and they, they are they are great looking figures, and it's a period that I'm I'm particularly interested in. So. Um, that meant I got the job of looking through it first, which was which was good. It's quite quite a complicated set of rules, I would say, but at the same time, the the book the rule book does a great way of managing those complications with great diagrams and great pictures and very well written explanations as well. Yeah. Um, then we move on to another rule book that review beneath uh, the Lily Banner a Taste of Victory, which was by our reg which is written by our regular contributor. Barry Hilton, isn't it? Yes, it is. I would say it's not really a rule book so much as just a compilation of scenarios. Yeah. That's... So it and it spans all across the globe and slightly different periods, all all within his key area of focus. But yeah, it was it was fun to go through that one. Lots yeah. of like. Yeah, it was, it was particularly well laid out. I thought that book, the graphic design <laughs> on it, was <laughs> yeah, <exceptional>. yeah it was <laughs> somehow familiar to me. Yeah. I'm not sure why. Yeah, we did that one. War Games Illustrated yeah. laid that one out for Barry. Uh, so it looks exceptional. Yeah, beautiful. Um, <laughs> and then we've got some War Games Atlantic figures with an unpronounceable name. Yeah, I decided Ina Ra was the way to say it, but I, I should, I don't know. Maybe I get it wrong. Yeah, we definitely sure. didn't call them Space Dwarves or Space Squats. Dwarves, Squats. Yeah, yeah, that's not what we called them, but we <laughs> both look very like it. Yeah, so. Um, so yeah, what's that? Three, four, five, six pages of uh, of <laughs> review stuff there. So a lot of that stuff also appears online and more in depth online with videos and, and spin arounds as well. Yeah. Uh, you, you you prime members particularly will be familiar with that. Um, then we move into full paper jacket. Full paper jacket is a book preview section by our book owl Neil Smith who um, specifically previews books. We keep we keep trying to hammer this home, that he doesn't do reviews. He doesn't do a review and say, right, this book is good for this reason, this book is bad for this reason. He previews them. So these are books that have not yet come out, and he looks at the books and, and, and uh, finds what would be interesting to Wargamers. So he always has a Wargamers take, a Wargamers an uh, angle on, on military history books that are coming out. Two pages on that, and then we are into the first theme article, God Wills It. So just to remind you, the theme for this issue is Holy War. We've got how many? Four, five, six articles about this, probably? It's certainly five. I can't actually remember if there's six or not, and because I've only got a on-screen PDF rather than a juicy magazine due to lockdown, I can't actually check. Yeah, 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 that... Yes, I have got the magazine because the magazines have been delivered into War Games Illustrated and they're going out to um, subscribers as well. They've been sent out to subscribers and, of course, you Prime members have got the PDF as well, just like James has. But, yeah, War Games Illustrated being scattered to the four winds. Um, we're, we're all, although I'm in the office, the rest of the staff are working from home. So, yeah, you've not got your hands on it yet, have you, James? No, I've not. 
Um, so this 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 is the introduction to the theme, um, and it's been written by Pete Brown, one of our regular contributors, big friend of the magazine, and a great writer and a avid uh, war gamer. So he always writes from a war game in annual, which is uh, angle, which is great. He did he recently review the war games <laughs> annual, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but but as well as his annuals, he does angles, and and his angle is always from a war gaming point of view. Uh, and as is often the case, the introduction article actually came last because I, I we'd got other articles for this theme together, and I said. I think we're missing something here. We're missing something that tries to encompass Holy Wars multi-period and looks at some of the more interesting and less obvious ones. So what Pete does in this article, he's, he goes chronologically um, back through history, looking at some, obviously only some, Holy Wars in the beginning, starting with um, uh, some uh, an interesting story about god napping which i think is a phrase that uh, that Pete had coined himself which which was basically two nations uh, stealing statues god statues from each other hittites i think were involved in babylonians um then we he's got a bit, uh, piece in there about the um romans attacking um anglesey in wales and against the druids the celtic druids there uh, Northern Crusades are dealt with on the next page, which is um, often a crusading angle that isn't as obvious or taken up by as many war gamers as crusading in the Holy Land. And we've also got the Taipang Rebellion, uh, which is a later Holy War as well, and go also the rise of Islam, which is back to Holy Wars in the Holy Land, which is pre-Crusader action in the in the uh, Holy Land. Uh, and various other things as well. So it's a it's a broad introduction to holy war war gaming and something that I felt was needed after we'd got the other more specific articles put together. Yeah, it's something Pete's really good at as well. You'll often kind of call upon him at the last minute to be like, "Can you just throw a load of ideas together?" And mm, yeah, he, he's good at that. And, and as we say, he, he always comes from a war gaming annual, so it's not just somebody who writes about. The history or think about it from a war game perspective which is um, what we want which is what we're all about isn't it for sure <clears throat> so after a couple of pages of adverts uh, we get into something that we could potentially talk about for hours but don't worry we won't we, we might you never know <laughs> <laughs> so this is the results from the 2020 war games illustrated awards every year we we hold an awards ceremony um in which we get you, Prime members and other readers of the magazine and our Facebook followers as well, to vote for their best of in the wargaming world. So we've got, is it nine categories, I think? Yeah, it was a bit which, of a weird one this year because we had to drop some, didn't we? Because of the yeah. shows. But. Yeah, of course, we had to drop the show category. Or um, There was a couple early on in 2020, but um, I thought it would be a bit one-sided if only they were yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, that actually ran this year yeah the only show that ran this year yeah yeah well, I, think was, <laughs> I got to go to two got to go to hammerhead in newark which was literally on the cusp of lockdown mm -hmm. and then um tactica in hamburg which uh, which is always a great show I love going there yeah. but um yeah the problem with that was not so much coronavirus more the storm that hit oh, yes. over there <clears throat> But anyway, th they're things that we didn't do. <laughs> but uh, but the things we did do um, were categories for best game 2020, um, which, I mean, we, we spoiler alert here, I suppose we should say, shouldn't we? Because we're, we're on the cusp of giving away all the, uh, all the winners here. Um, so let's have a look at the categories that we did run with, um, starting with Best Game 2020, which took us all by surprise. A little bit, yeah. Wasn't supposed to happen, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? When you got, you know, we've got 1,800 plus votes and we do, we do check them, don't we? We go through it and we make sure that there's nothing untoward in there. Yeah, you'll occasionally see a bulk of over-enthusiastic all one after another in the same time frame voting for the exact same thing so we'll just 
condense that down to one vote. But uh, yeah, something yeah, we particularly look out for is the people who will vote for things in the wrong category. That so too, might, yeah. Might vote for Clash of Spears as being best figure range or even best yeah. show or something like that. Yeah, yeah. We do pull those out. But yeah, Clash of Spears took us a bit by surprise, actually. Um, it, 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 I think it was, was it, it was Bolt Action or Chain of Command that won last year. And we're expecting both of those two things to do well again this year. But, but no, it's the, um, the rise of the ancients. Yeah, very much so. Mm. So, so yeah, Clash of Spears, uh, got the best game. And, and I think you've spoke to the guy, guy from clash haven't yeah you? i had a chat and we'll hopefully talk more because it's one that went a bit under our radar and as soon as it kind of got all those votes i had a look through the book and it's got it's definitely got some really interesting rules a lot of stuff about reaching a tipping point in the battle and how you can capitalize on that and stuff so yeah we'll definitely look more at, at clash later on okay right cool yeah so clash was the best game uh the best manufacturer as much as a surprise of clash of spears was oh, best a bit boring dan um, <laughs> in this next bit. <laughs> yeah the, the best manufacturer was definitely not a surprise in so much as every year that we've run this they've won uh so perry miniatures yeah uh great guys we love them to bits uh, we miss going out for a drink with them actually don't we james yeah yeah, we we're um yeah our regular our regular meetings in the pub are off and our regular presentation in the pub was off. So you'll see a picture there of what looks like two bandits basically <laughs> uh, going a bit crazy in the back garden. They're very excited. Yeah, very as, as they should be. So yeah, he very has, yeah. He looks like he's using that trophy as a weapon now that you mention it. It looks yeah. It look. I said to him, it looks both great and sinister at the same time. That picture. That's probably a perfect description of the Perrys. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, best figure range went to Frostgrave. We know that Frostgrave is popular with our readers, um, uh, and we're big big fans of uh, Joe McCulloch, who who wrote the Frostgrave rules, and we're big fans of Northstar, who produced the Frostgrave figures. So that was that was great to see them win. Now, funnily enough, they they won two years ago. They uh, were kicked off the top spot last year, but they came back to win it this year. They have had some really good figures in yeah. 2020 as well. Lots of stuff in Observation Post that was really good. Yeah, yeah. We, we covered their stuff quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, it was good to see them taking that uh, gong. Next, Best New Rules 2020 went to Infamy Infamy. So uh, another large skirmish ancient set of rules from the two fat lardish stable um and yeah i mean obviously new rules it came out last year i yeah. first saw this at um vapn attack i think that was another show actually that took place earlier in the year or oh. 2020 yeah. so yeah that that was being showcased there and we've spoke to rich clark since told him that he won he was Full of gratitude, obviously, and again, he's he's going to be writing something for us, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, it was a real trend in that category. It was three mass skirmish games that made the top three, so definitely seems like war games are really into that kind of scale of battle at the moment. So, again, something we'll look at more in future issues, I think. Yeah, yeah. Best customer service went to Warlord Games. Well done, those guys. Not to be underrated, that winning that award um, and. I mean, you could obviously say that they make most more mistakes than anyone else. Therefore, they customer service is. <laughs> That's a lovely point. way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, well, well done to the guys from Warlord Games for for getting that one. Um, over the page or on the next screen, <laughs> um, we've got most popular article. So this is a bit of a kind of bit market research for us in some ways, isn't it? It's nice. To, it's just nice to know what people think was the best article of. 2020 yeah uh we what we do here is i pick my favorite 12 and you pick your favorite 12 yeah. uh, and we get the punters to pick from those of course they can they can also supply one of their own but it, it we realize that having done something like 360 articles in a year um it, it does get a bit difficult to remember one from the other so yeah, yeah. From the list, how to uh, from the how to 
category was how to improve a NDF building, which Paul Davis, one of our regular contributors, um, and contributing in this magazine, I think we're about to find out. Yes, I think he is. Yeah. Right. Best. Well, that, that segues nicely to the next one, I guess, because all those MDF buildings prove pretty popular. Yeah, it does. Yeah, of course it does. I'm not, I'm not, not struck me. But yeah, best War Games accessories went to Sarissa for the second or third year running. By the look of the picture in which they're holding three trophies, they've, they've evidently won it yeah. three times. So yeah, Sarissa produced great MDF stuff. We've got a few words from Steve from Sarissa there about what they've got coming up. Uh, so yeah, uh, probably no surprise to see them picking up that category. And the best issue of War Games Illustrated 2020 was WI 393, the June issue. Uh, and we probably put that down to the fact that we gave away a set of rules with that issue. They do seem to be quite popular. It has to be said. So yeah, yeah. So that was the that was the issue that we gave away the 32 page. Um, never mind the Bill Hooks rule book, which was our rule book for Wars of the Roses, which. Whether you wanted it or not, you got it free with the magazine. And, of course, Prime members also got it free as a PDF download as well. So, yes, uh, probably no surprise that that one, because that, that rule set is proving very popular. Yeah, well, I mean, the rule set came third in Best New Game as well, so... Well, that's true, yeah, it did. Yeah. So, <laughs> it is popular. Mm. so, there you are. That, that's a look at all the winners there. You can In the magazine article, you'll see a lot more detail about who came second, who came third, and a bit more information about how we put the thing together. Um, but, yeah, that's the awards. So, that's the awards article. So, let's keep on pining through the magazine past another couple of adverts and we get into uh, another one of our theme articles what we do in the magazine is we tend to have a theme article a non-theme article a theme article a non-theme article so you'll see that trend now i've specifically pointed it out to you so we're on to the crusaders here the crusaders as wars of religion question mark is really the point of this one Dr. Steve Tibble, who writes for his regularly on his chosen period of the Crusades, he's both a professor of history. Sorry, he's not. I've just promoted him. <laughs> he's, a, yeah. he's a doctor of history uh, and he is also a war gamer. So he's a great person to hear from. And what he's talking about here is um, were the Crusader Wars really all about religion or can we look at them from a different perspective? And he does go on to look at them from yeah. a different perspective. It's a really interesting one, to be honest. Like, going through this one, it's it's kind of more... Yes, religion was a factor, but it was far more down to almost like socioeconomic factors at the time and things, which might sound a bit dry, but it's anything but. And it really... He brings in new ways to look at your army building and fighting on the tabletop. So, yeah, that's yeah I really enjoyed going through this one. Yeah, and... Um, and some great photos of, as well. Um, Gripping Beast yeah. figures feature quite heavily. And we're going to be backing this article up, which appears in the magazine, with some more online content for Prime members, of uh, looking closely at the figures and spins of the figures as well. We, we do like our figure spins, and we, we, we know you do as well as Prime members. So you'll get to see uh, some spins of these figures as well turn them around have a close look at them yourself and that's something we want to keep doing isn't it james Support. yes i mean it's something that's easier without lockdown because this was obviously done before lockdown um you went and got loads of cool stuff from gripping beast brought it back to the office and got the opportunity to take all these photographs so that's much harder to do now in fact i think you've still got all these in the office right because you've not been able to take them back yet Shh, don't tell them i've sold them okay yeah, I've sold them all on eBay. We've got a very good <laughs> price. No, they're, they're all still in the office. They're all still downstairs. In fact, I was photographing yeah, uh, them only yesterday for another article we've got coming up about Herald, right. actually. So. Oh, yes. Mm. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Mean, they're very collaborative. I think that's if we're, if we're going behind the scenes on it. Like, this article comes in because Steve, I guess, is used to writing essays. His stuff will generally come in as quite a long-form piece of text. So then someone will go in and break it down into sub parts and work out where sections can be. You then looked at it and worked out what would be the best pictures for it and got the figures for it and put that together. Mm. Then it's checked through multiple times by different people. So each article is kind of this amalgamation of lots of different people and skills, I suppose. 
Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what it's all about. I mean, we've always said that Wargames Illustrated is a contributor-led magazine. So, yeah, uh, we, we, we use the contributors as a springboard and we piece together what, what we think will look good and what we think is appropriate from there. Yeah. Um, r- moving on to the next article, uh, non-theme, we've got a painting and modelling article, which is the rebuilding of St. Nazaire. Um, so we're looking here at a model ostensibly that was that was our first jump off point for this which was we saw this great model that had been made by a spanish modeler vincent vidal um he'd made this marvelous model and we asked him to tell us a bit more about it, it it's he's he's basically produced a war games table that's based on operation chariot a commando raid from world war Two when some British commandos attacked a U-boat base in France. Um, and what Vincent's done is he's, he's created a model all around that. His, his handle is really the modelling of it. Having said that, he did, he, he did play it with his chums as a, um, a bolt action game. But I think it's the model that's the interesting point here, isn't it? Oh, for sure. And especially, it looks impressive anyway, and then you see the build photos of things like the U-boat, and you realise just how much detail and effort's gone into it. It's it's mm. very impressive. Yeah, in cardboard, a lot of it. Yeah, that's oh. that's really crazy too. Yeah, his main medium. So, yeah, he's built, he's built, the he's hand-built the boats, he's hand-built a, a crane to go with it, the U-boats and the surface boats as well, and, he's, and he tells us about um, the whole thing, putting the whole thing together from beginning to end, including finishing touches where he's he's painted the um, sea, which almost looks like a piece of art in itself. It does, yeah. Mm. And it's it's nice to finally get that one in the magazine because it's one that we've had we've been sitting on for a little while, isn't it? And just due to time constraints or space constraints, constraints, we've had to keep bumping it a little bit. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, that does that does sometimes happen, doesn't it? We we for whatever reason we we have to move the article on. But yeah, it was great to get this one in eventually, and it it's uh, yeah, it's a touch of class, definitely. For sure. Um. So another couple of adverts, and then we're into a how-to article, how to make a North American meeting house. So we touched on these briefly earlier. How-to articles uh, tend to be by Paul Davis, who's been making articles for us for something ridiculous like 14 years, or sorry, producing articles for us for about 14 years. Uh, And He's an expert model maker. Uh, He likes making buildings, although we've featured numerous things that he's done in the past from hedgerows to all sorts of different terrain and of course as a prime member you can get um his pdf um how to pdf one and two we've we've produced where you can see a lot of the other stuff that paul's made this one ties in nicely with your free epic scale acw figures that you got with the last magazine because this figure is specifically designed to go with that scale of figure with 15 mil ish figure hesitate to say exactly 15 mil there's been a lot of talk about the size of those figures oh, endless debate yeah but but essentially this will work for 15 to 12 mil figures really so this is a north american meeting house the sort of thing that was typically featured on american civil war battlefields um like antietam for example uh, and even if it's not on the battlefield they're often nearby yeah, and I mean, uh, his article that won Best Article, it's the same techniques, you know, it's papering all those simple cutouts to make them look far more advanced than they actually are. It's, uh, yeah. it's a really good how-to, that one. Yeah, it's a great one, yeah. Um, just following that, it's not not actually an advert, but it is, um, it's a notice of our painting competition, uh, which we've still got, we're still accepting entries for, aren't we? Yeah, there's about a month and a bit to go because we decided to extend it a little to make the most of if you're in the UK, you can use lockdown time. If you're not, you probably got a bit of extra free time due to working remotely and stuff. So might as well make sure we get as many nice entries as possible. And we have already been getting quite a lot of entries through. So Yeah. So th- this is a giant in miniature, basically, painting up your giant in miniature figures. Yep. And it's uh, some really good prizes there as well, so definitely worth a go. Yeah, and have a look at the categories because there's all sorts of interesting uh, main categories and subcategories as well. Indeed. Uh, 
including I Deserve Love Too. Poor, poor unwanted giants in miniature yeah. needing painting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next article is about American Civil War battlefields on hollowed ground. Neil Smith, another one of our regular contributors and a, a go-to guy, always enjoy reading Neil's uh, stuff, and another war gamer, another avid war gamer who knows his military history, he used to live in America, although he's Scottish, um, and he's penned this article for us. That We went to Neil and said, hey, Neil, this is your kind of thing. Could you write something for us about American Civil War battlefields? Uh, shamelessly to tie in with the release of Warlord's epic ACW figures and the ones that we gave away last month because we felt that, you know, if you were new to the American Civil War, you might not know the American Civil War battlefield landscape. So Neil looks at some quite um, stereotypical features of American Civil War battlefields like he, talk, he talks at the beginning about undulation on battlefields, then he'll talk about wheat fields, then he'll talk about snake rail fences, then he'll talk about uh, more weirder things like the Devil's Den at Gettysburg. We've also got some pictures in there of buildings from forthcoming from Warlord and Sarissa for their ACW epic range. So, yeah, we, we, we wanted that by way of a introduction really to um to looking at features on the american civil war battlefield um and i think i think he, he does that doesn't he yeah i mean it was kind of a follow-up to the previous uh, issues one about just the introduction to the american civil war as well wasn't it it was yeah definitely we we commissioned a two two piece um a two-piece thing there with, with him writing first about the american civil war in general and then secondly about the landscape sure um right the next one we're back to holy wars again uh now you you speak fluent french don't you james i i am completely <laughs> fluent in yeah yeah i think this means the church of war or something similar right okay right that's what's my it expert about? translation <laughs> <laughs> what's it about uh, it's uh, it's a really good article. Noel Williams, who's actually someone who is a very new contributor in the whole Paul's been with us for 14 years scheme of things. Um, it's just about different characteristics of churches within war and where they can feature on the battlefield, different ways that they've been utilised throughout history and ways that you can really work it into your own scenarios and period. Um, so almost... It's got that same kind of diversity that our introduction article does have, but with a more specific focus of the actual building of the church and using it as an objective, using it as a point of uh, information gathering from one of the tall towers and things. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a cool article. And again, you kind of brought together some different photos for this one and yeah, finished off yeah, all so the pretty bits. It's quite a nice <laughs> one, quite a nice one to photograph this when you're doing multi-period stuff and you... I mean, I mean, the first picture is just a church in the Crimea, British in Crimea, uh, and Russian troops in the Crimea. But yeah, finding um, pictures to go along with all these different aspects of what he's talking about was was really interesting. And yeah, it is. It's a very interesting article about how churches have have been used in the past during war, and and how they could be used on the war games table. So yeah, um, very good one that. Yeah, for sure. The next article is Slave Revolt. Now, we're revealing a secret here, because if you didn't know, and you probably didn't, you're going to know when you read this, The SPQR, the um, ancient skirmish set of rules from Warlord Games, is being revised, um, not so much as a second edition, just a revised edition. And um, that's due to come out in the next couple of months. It probably won't thank me for telling you when. <laughs> uh, so I'll just keep it as vague as possible in the next couple of months. And um, so did you speak to the guy behind this or he, he wrote to us to get in touch? Yeah, I uh, I got in touch with him with some questions. And this was one of the ones that kind of was, was tied up all at the end because he had actually been called in at the last minute to work on the epic ACW rules that Warlord have done. So managed to get him once he was done with all that just after Christmas and... Yeah, he told me a few details about the changes in the game. I won't say what they are because then that would defeat the purpose of anyone reading the article. But yeah, uh, yeah. sounds like they've really improved it. 
Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, I know a lot of people felt that it did need some attention. So yes, they they've tried to address that. We then go on to um, some scenarios and some background detail for slave revolts. So this was something that didn't make the final cut in the uh, in the rule book itself. Not due to a lack of quality, we hasten to add, but oh, no. just just due to a lack of page pages. So yeah. so we've we've put. Um, the slave revolt stuff in here. So typically it's kind of Spartacus, um, but also it, it talks about other potential slave revolts. So you have got gladiators in there as well, yeah. but you've also got um, uh, slave revolts that could have taken place at other parts of the uh, ancient world, basically. And now we've revealed the secret about SPQR, we can reveal why we're giving away this frame with the yes. uh, magazine because SBQR being an ancient set of war games rules, uh, Greek hoplites are a feature in the book. Uh, so you've already got some, you've already got uh, eight of them to uh, start your SPQR force with. And very nice they are too. Yeah. Very nice figures. Yeah. Uh, not new, um, but they're, you know, you, it's a great starting point if you want to get into SBQR, or even if you don't and you want to wargame Greek hoplites uh, with any other wargame system. You, you've got a starter there with that. So, yeah, several several scenarios um, for SPQR there. The next article is back to our theme of Holy War, um, illuminating history and your wargames. I, I think I recognise the name of the guy who wrote this. He's a terrible person, an awful, awful man. No, uh, yeah, this is done by my dad, actually, which was, that was a an intriguing collaborative process to go through. Yeah. Um, I actually pitched this to him because it's it's probably about the only thing that he would feel comfortable writing for the magazine. I think he sees himself as, like, enthusiastic when it comes to wargaming, but maybe not as equipped as a lot of the other writers, but he knows his illuminated manuscripts. He's been passionate about them for, for decades, so... Yeah, and he's. I think it's a really interesting article. It's like things oh, yeah. that I didn't know about in here for sure. Yeah, he's definitely interesting, and it's telling that our proofreader Duncan McFarlane, who was the original owner of Wargames Illustrated, said, "Is this an early entry for the article of the year?" So he was so impressed. That he, so proud. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's done good. Yeah, he's de he's definitely doing good, and uh, and it's very interesting uh, about you know just what he's picked up from his in depth knowledge of uh, of a lifetime study of illuminated manuscripts. Uh, yeah, I mean it's not his profession, but it's definitely something like the bookshelves in our house uh, in the family home have got some ridiculously expensive, overpriced books with like prints of these things in them and stuff. So yeah, mm. he's uh, he, he did an art degree and things mostly inspired by looking at these little jewels of illustrated manuscripts right okay cool yeah well um um there's a lot there's a lot to get into there which we won't now but no. you as a reader definitely should because there's some there's some great stuff in there that you'll come away uh, genuinely not having known before you read i it. suspect so yeah i did for sure mm. uh the next article um it sort of harks back to the riverine warfare theme that we did a couple of months ago. It's yeah. the Sunless River. It's written by Joe McCulloch, and it's a solo scenario for Ghost Archipelago or Frostgrave. So Ghost Archipelago, if you don't know, is a set of rules that uh, was born out of Pro Frostgrave. It's a sister set of rules. And um, we approached Joe, asked if he'd write an article uh, for our riverine warfare issue. It was because, generally, because this supplement f for Ghost Archipelago had a lot of um, boat action in it, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. And uh, we actually, Joe very kindly let us duplicate some of those rules at the back of this article, just so Frostgrave players can also roll that into their games. So that's really cool. And it was fun to set up this board for this one and uh, use the, the quirky stuff. Yeah. Was it fun to make the giant spiders? No, it wasn't my favourite thing to do, Dan, now that you mention it. But it was fun to paint them, though. I mean, they're great models once they're put together. But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I wasn't keen on building those. Uh, but, yeah, they, they're really good once they're built. Yeah, they, sure. they, they do look very good and an interesting colour scheme as well, obviously. 
yeah, kind of uh, went for a bioluminescent sort of glow to them to represent they're in this cave that has a river f- flowing through it. So, yeah, yeah, it's fun to do something a bit different and touch on fantasy and really push the colour tones and things. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, Joe never writes a bad article, does he? He, he puts no. so much thought into what he produces that we can't ever turn him down, really. No, and it it being a solo scenario is perfect for the times we're in right now. So Yeah. And well, probably you could transfer it to even a non-fantasy theme, I suspect. You could, you could work these rules in and use some of the solo play aspects of it. Yeah, yeah, which is always worth pointing out with a lot of the particular scenario-based stuff we put in the magazine. It's not just for that one system. No. You're, any wargamer should be able to get something else out of it. Um, turning to the next article then, now this back to Holy War. Now, I know you're fluent in Latin. Yep. Uh, so you'll be able to tell us a bit about this one. I, yeah, thanks for. I feel like this is just a, a subtle <laughs> form of like worker abuse that you're just going to say I'm fluent in every language there is. Um, yeah, this is from Barry Hilton, uh, who is, as you've said earlier, a very regular contributor. Um, and yeah, he's looking at the uh, clergy in. I'm not even sure how you pronounce the battle itself. I should have practiced. Algrim. 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 It's all grim or agrim, isn't it? One of the two. Okay, there you go. Well, there's your fluency coming through, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> problem is, I'm not sure what language. But, but yes, it, it is Barry, and he's uh, he's returning to his um, subject that he knows more about than seemingly anyone else in the world, <laughs> uh, which is which is later 17th century warfare. Um, and, yeah, priests on the, on, the, on the battlefield at the Battle of Algrim. Yes, uh, and they, it does seem like they played quite a role and really bolstered the forces. Um, some interesting stuff in there, and as always, some very tasty eye candy pictures. Yeah, yeah. and it's always it's always nice to get Barry stuff because generally it means we don't have to take photographs for the article because he just sends them all over. That's right. Yeah, it's a it's a big bonus making out of that photographers out there. Yes. Yeah, um, we'd love to get more stuff like that through. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Um, that's the last of the theme articles. We then move into an article that um, we've um, shamelessly given a um, clickbait style title to. Of you the say we. I, I don't. I don't think that's fair. You know, it's uh, it's very much the editor's job to come up with that clickbait stuff. <laughs> the greatest innovation in tabletop gaming for a hundred years. Well, you can decide, dear reader, after you've uh, read the article. Um, but essentially, what this is is about is a um, is a new in- new innovation by um, a group called Valkrix Gaming, and we spoke to the um, director of the of the company, for want of a better word, uh, John Spalding, who who tell, told us about this vision he had for making an interactive war games table. Now. As somebody pointed out this morning to me, it, it, it doesn't. The photos don't do it justice. Uh, I've, we've got to put our hands up and say that because it's a very interesting new media kind of idea with an interactive war games table, and it doesn't look its best in photos. So I would urge you to read read the article and read yeah. what John's got to say about the project. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the actual the details of it. I, I think it's fair to say I was maybe a bit cynical at first. But then after reading the article and going through it, it's like, yeah, there's, it's, it's not trying to just take war games as they are and just put them on a table with flashing lights. It's completely re-engineering the way that you could play a war game, which, which is a really fascinating approach to it. So, yeah, I'd be a believer now. Yes, yeah, good. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth, worth a read through and to see what they're all about, what they're trying to do, which is possibly the worst possible timing ever to be creating yeah. gaming centers during during a pandemic which is really bad luck for them but um i'm sure they're going to push push on with it once once we all collectively get through this yeah they've certainly put a lot into it i mean the the fantasy figures and the art and stuff as well as someone who's really into the fantasy side of gaming they look really good mm, yeah. you know they're things i'd want to paint up as well so yeah so the next article um painting greek hoplites uh which is um by 
Jeff Griffith's son. So, <laughs> I'd like to be known as that from now on. <laughs> so yeah, this one, this one's by you. I, I, we've we've called it painting group half plates, but of course you focus on one particular feature, don't you? Yeah, it's really all about the shields. I mean, it's the thing that stands out when you look at the frame. They're they're gigantic and they really defined the way hoplites fought because of the way that they're built. So I just thought, why not focus on them? It's something that most armies are going to have a need for. You can translate the techniques you'd use on shields to other things. You could even move that onto vehicles if you prefer more more modern periods. Um, so yeah, just lots of different ways to approach the shields. Mm. Uh, starting off with the basic tonal shading and then adding skirts to them, blood splatter, damage, and things like that. It's... I had real fun doing this one, to be honest with you. It's always nice to just zone in on an area and give it some detail and love. Yeah, and and, and as you say, the t techniques that you can bring to painting bronze in general, obviously, I mean, it's a big a, shield, a bronze shield is a big area of bronze, isn't it? But you can use that on bronze armour as well. Yeah, for sure. And even things like decal application like that I go into, you might not be as familiar with the different techniques you can do for that, so... Hopefully everyone can learn a little bit from the article. Yeah. So that's what we call a frame focus article. So it, it, it's about the frame that we're giving away with the magazine. And, and we tend to do one of those every time we give a frame away with the magazine. We talk specifically about it in one of the articles inside the magazine. Um, that's it, would you believe? We've, we've reached the end. Bar a few adverts that I, I suggest that all of our readers look at and buy from. Uh, very much so, so. So they keep supporting the hobby, uh, but yeah, we, we're at the at the back of the magazine, and we've covered the 108 pages that make up War Games Illustrated, and we've rattled on long enough. But hopefully, Probably far too long, I would suspect. Far too but. long, yeah. Um, yeah, Mark, who's going to have to put this video together, will no doubt be cursing us in the background already. Um, but yeah, uh, that's War Games Illustrated 398, the February issue of the magazine. And we hope, and hopefully, by looking um, inside the sausage, uh, we've given you a, a bit of a clearer idea of how the magazine not only looks, but how it comes together as well. Yeah. And if if this long rambling discussion <laughs> proves popular by some strange for some strange reason, um, we'll do it all again next month, won't we? Yeah, I think it would be great to get feedback and hear what people would like to know about, to be honest. So either in the comments at the bottom of the Prime post that this will go in, or once it goes up on YouTube, ask us to, we want to know what you want to know about, really. Um, yeah. And do you want us to stop talking about sausages? Because I certainly feel slightly uncomfortable every time it's mentioned. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, well... Um... Thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for looking, and um, yeah, we'll uh, see you all again soon. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime War Games Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.